I had a customer come to me with this here. It's a ball joint for a uh, 57 Chevy. And he wants to raise the front end of his car up two inches. What he needs is what I drew here in a solid model on the computer. Um, but you can't buy them anymore. So he asked me if I would be interested in making a set. Um, all right, so what I did was I created, here's how I created this. I took dimensions off of this ball joint, the center diameter, the holes, and then I determined what this radius was by establishing a few dimensions off the side. You see a 570 dimension there. Um, and then when I thought I had it fairly close, all I really did was I zoomed it until it was about right. And I looked at it and said, you know, it looks fair. So, then I took and I extruded that and created a couple other sketches here. Put a boss on one end and uh, I put a hole on the other end. Turn that part into a drawing. Where it is, open drawing. So I created this drawing. And basically, what you do is you just drag and drop different uh, angles of views. But anyhow, so I did that there with, okay. So then I have my CNC mill and uh, I drew a line here so I could start out here off the material. I drew a phantom line here that represents the diameter of round aluminum that I'm going to make these out of. And I wrote a program on my CNC milling machine that walks around this. I wrote programs before I did that. I wrote programs to face and turn and bore and and uh, the end result is this right here. So I have one done. Uh, just wanted to kind of give an introduction to SolidWorks here. Now, without this drawing, uh, I would not have been able to create this, recreate this shape. So if I set this on top of there, it matches up fairly well. The holes line up. Um, it's giving the customer what he wants. He's going to take this off the control arm, set this in on top of the ball joint, put the control arm down on here, run longer bolts down through it and the front end of his 57 Chevy is going to be raised up two inch two inches so anyhow that's an introduction to SolidWorks cutting two pieces of three and a half diameter two and a quarter long I have a good solid setup here on my roll-in band saw. Drilling out the center and the lathe. I have it chucked in a big three jaw and one and five thirty seconds rubber in here. Just rough out of the bolt. 
I wrote a program on my two-axis CNC lathe and uh, just want to give you a quick brief introduction to this lathe. This is what the program looks like. It's a cycle event. I'm making 15 passes. When I'm done with this part, it'll look like this part right here. I did one. Um, so anyhow, let me start it up here. Load, run, start. Turn the spindle on. Turn my cooling on. We got a shield in place. And we hit the go button. Finished pass right now. Chips keep getting in the way here. Five thousand pass. Okay, it's done. Except for a little bit that needs knocked off there in the center, which I can do manually. Okay, I'm setting up for the second side. I slide the part in against the parallel, pull the parallel out, and uh, I have a program written for this too. You can do this on a manual machine. Um, but I have a CNC, so it's just so much nicer. Anyhow, I have uh, two cycle events with two different tools. I'm going to face it to the length, and then I'm going to do the little bore. I'm going to make a bore pass through the whole thing, through the entire hole. When I'm done, it's going to look like this right here. So it's going to look real nice. It's going to be to the right height here. And uh, if I take the 57 Chevy ball joint, Set it down on there, has a nice fit. You can see I have room to machine around the profile later. So, all right. I'm going to close my cover with one hand. Not easy. And start. Load, run, start, and it says load tool number one. Let's spin this around. Put the first tool in. This is scary if you don't know what you're doing because you're going to hit a go button. It's going to go there. Go. face it with that first pull. And the machine is going to come over 
to a conducive place that I have set at home for there. I'm going to spin my boring bar around. So I spun my boring bar tool around so it's in position. I'm going to hit the go button again. I'm going to make a finish cut through the hole. And then I'm going to make a series of cuts, roughing this out, and then it's going to come in and come along and come across it and finish it real nice and pretty and go back to the home position. I just set up the first operation here on the CNC milling machine. It's a two axis CNC knee mill, it's uh, just a two axis CNC. Um, and what I'm doing is drilling three holes. One, two, three. So I put the part in, put a V-block in the vise, tighten the vise. I have the part set up on parallels. I zeroed it in with my universal indicator holder and my indicator. I set zero and I'm going to put in a combination center drill countersink and then I'm going to put a drill bit in drill through I'm going to end up with this I put put the ball joint down on there it has a nice fit I drop the drill bit down through the holes to down through the holes to double check and make sure the holes are right so I'm good to go for the second one Just tighten the just tighten the combination center drill countersink up in the collet with my power draw bar. Move the first hole. Center drill. You do this so the drill bit doesn't walk off. Move to the next hole. For my program, I put the dimensions that I created on the computer and I made the 3D model. Take this out, put my drill bit in, turn it on, I tech drill at it, I go down a little, bring the drill bit back up out breaks the chips. I get down in there about halfway. Put a drop of this oil here on it. Drill through the rest of the way. I'm going to go ahead and finish this operation up. Then I'm going to take this plate here, which is a fixture plate that I used in the past to machine this profile. I'm just going to use it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bore a hole in the center that fits this here and I'm going to drill and, drill and tap three holes and then I'm going to put this in a vise and then I'm going to write a program to cut the outside profile. Removing the burrs from the holes. I found a position on my jig where I can get three holes in and put the center hole in and use the same jig that I used before. So I got out a drill. I got out my drills and taps. Pick 5 16 to 18. This is how you drill and tap the hole. First you drill it, high speed. And then put the, the machine in low gear. Gotta take out the drill and put in a tap. Okay, I put some oil on the on the tap and around the hole. Power tapping. 
to make sure there's nothing underneath. Changes sound a little bit when it's through. Move to the next stall. Do the same. More oil. More tapping oil. In order to bore out, in order to bore out the center of this, I wrote a program uh, to mill a circle, mill a profile. I'll show you what it looks like. Just the blue circle. So that is event four. Um, there it is right there. That's what I wrote. So I got it on a real high speed, a real high speed rate, just to scratch it. I'm going to start event four. I'm going to do a down on it just a little bit just want to make sure that I now it's making a finish cut I'm sure I'm pretty close to the right size I'm not going to machine it that fast I'm just on a quickie little scratch. I went a little deeper. I could have set the part on there. Okay. I'm going to go around it. It's going to rough it out. I'll change my feed rate to like three inches per minute and cut it. I wrote a program to cut the outside of this. I want to make it look exactly like the ball joint on the top. Well, the program is pretty involved. I'll show you what it looks like. That's what it looks like. What I'm doing, I'm starting here. I'm starting off the material. I'm coming on, going around some arcs. One, two, an arc. First arc, second arc, straight line, another arc, straight line, another arc, arc. Another arc, and then I'm going a straight line to get off the part. If I dwell on there, it will leave a mark. So I don't want to do that. So anyhow, here's what I'm going to do. That that uh, program contains the holes and the uh, center hole and this outside program, and it starts at event five. So I'll turn my mill on. I'm going to go about 400 thousandths, push the button, see how it goes. Should be alright. I need a little spray mist on there, I have a spray, I have a spray mister here I can turn on. I'm making the fourth pass now. These are all rough cuts. Um, I made three passes with this end mill here, I have it in the call up there. Um, right now I have an end mill in there that looks exactly like this. And uh, what I'm going to do is eventually finish it off with this end mill right here. The flutes of the end mill are long enough to make a nice clean finish cut across the two inch face. Hopefully it won't shatter. We'll see. I'm making a finish cut here. It took five rough cuts to cut all the way down along the two inches. Uh, I got an end mill in there now and it's just taking off a few thousands. It's not coming out real smooth, but I think it'll be okay. Um, I don't have a whole lot of end mills that long. I think I'd have preferred to make these one inch thick and uh, stack and make four. I'd approached it a little differently. I'd have cut them on this milling machine, cut them out of plate. And uh, I think it would have been a little bit more affordable. Which 
taken several hours to make these. If you are interested in machining and fabricating, subscribe to this YouTube channel, Ken's Machine Shop. I have over 50 years experience and I plan to make many more videos to help save this dying trade. Thanks for watching.